Good afternoon, everyone from Baijiang. I am on my way from this picturesque rural place to another picturesque rural place. Of course, because we're in China, we have someone very noisily selling random stuff in the middle of the road. And another very China thing about this place is this building, which is so out of place in this teeny village, and yet here it is. It looks like it belongs in a city, but it's here, all the way out here. I'm always seeing stuff like this in rural China. In most parts of rural China, the buildings have already become pretty modernized and they're mainly built with concrete. But well, every once in a while, you'll stumble into one of these ancient street things where they've kept the old architecture, kind of like renovated a bit maybe, but they always keep it in line with the original style. I mean, this is very authentic. Look at this. Not only did they use a very lumpy piece of rock, but they actually took like some kind of tool and carved extra lumps in the rock. So it really, really feels like you're back in, I don't know, like 1700 or something. But seriously though, I do like this place. It is very nice and I love these old neighborhoods. And if you're curious what the rest of the neighborhood looks like, aside from that section, it looks like this. So it's like, it's not bad. It's nice. It's just not as cute. One of my favorite things about living in China is how in pretty much every city, town, even a lot of villages, there are these paths along the riverbank where you can bike or walk, or some of them have even been turned into like little parks. And it's just a very nice place to be. In a lot of developing countries, the riverbanks are a place where trash goes and sewage and things like that. And China was no exception to that 10 or 20 years ago. I even saw that kind of stuff when I had just arrived in China in like, 2017, I was still seeing stuff like that. But things have really changed for the better. So there's all these nice paths along the river because now people actually like being along the river. Today's route is part of the final stretch of my 2000 kilometer bike tour around Zhejiang province. So believe me when I say I have seen a lot of riverbanks. <laughs> at last, I have arrived at where I'll be staying tonight, the little town of Hexiao. Going to the grocery store to get some instant noodles because there's nothing open. Such is life in rural China. Dinner is over at 7 p.m. We have my favorite noodles. This is going to be a good dinner tonight. And no, this is not sponsored, by the way. I just love these noodles. Hey. Hello. Hello. This is the rural China nightlife. You and the girl how cute. Like a little toy. How cute. Mm -hmm. Added some little seaweed thingies and some tiny pieces of lotus root, but you can't really see them. I always add some extra nutrients when I'm having instant noodles for dinner. Looks pretty good. All right, everyone, that's all for tonight. Take a look at this lovely scenery, and I will see you in the morning. <laughs> Good morning everyone from Hechao. 
I am about to head west again, going to a little place called Tonko, but I'm not gonna be staying the night there. I'm just going 40 minutes down the road to meet with some locals and get some video footage. And then I am headed towards Hangzhou. During my bike tours, I'm often surrounded by beautiful scenery, cool architecture, and friendly strangers. But of course, it can't be 24 seven excitement. Sometimes the road gets a bit boring. And during those times, I listen to music, podcasts, or today's sponsor, Blinkist. Blinkist is an app with condensed versions of, of over 6,500 different nonfiction books and podcasts. Each one is about 15 minutes long and is a great way to get all kinds of interesting knowledge and insights on a huge range of topics. If you're a super curious person who wants to learn more about the world, but you have a very busy schedule or a very short attention span or both, Blinkist is perfect for you. Today, I'm listening to Live Wired by David Eagleman. It's a super interesting look at the science of how the brain adapts to its surroundings and maximizes its efficiency. The brain locks down stable information so we don't have to think about it. It's the same phenomenon you experience after staring at a waterfall for a while. When you move your eyes away from it and look at some rocks, the stones will seem to be moving upward. This is simply because looking at the waterfall has made your brain default to a scenario in which it's normal for everything to be moving downward. Throughout our everyday life, it's easy to forget that we are actually just a bunch of neural connections living inside of a meat vessel. And this book was a great reminder to me of how fascinating and how amazing the brain is. And now I cannot wait to check out even more brain books on Blinkist. Creativity, parenting, nature, history, whatever you're interested in, it's here on Blinkist, as well as a bunch of things that you're not familiar with, but you now have a great way to learn about. There's also a cool feature called Blinkist Spaces, where you can share content that you found interesting or thought provoking, and your family and friends can actually access those titles even without a Blinkist premium subscription. If you guys are interested, check out the link in the description where you can get 25% off of a premium membership and a seven day free trial. Now, back to the biking. One thing that Tonko is known for is long skinny noodles. And these really are the longest skinniest noodles I have ever seen. So at a glance, this might look like it's a bunch of noodle fragments, but it's actually one single very long noodle that is wrapped around and around and around and around and around. Something I really love about handmade noodles as opposed to noodles cranked out by the industrial colossus is that every individual noodle has a slightly different texture and consistency and shape to it so that gives you a much more exciting culinary experience. I'm getting some new subscribers on Billy Billy right now. <laughs> yes, this was a productive morning indeed. All right, everyone, after a morning of noodles and other excitement, I'm back on the road heading towards Lin'an, which is actually part of the main city of Hangzhou. So you should know that the end is coming very soon. Hello, <laughs> From here, I headed north through mountains, bamboo, and tea fields to Deqing. And then I spent my final couple of days heading through the flat terrain of Tongxiang, 
And then the 2,000 kilometer bike tour came to a glorious end at the place where it began, right here on this path on the banks of the Tantong River. All in all, this bike tour took me about 40 days to complete, split into four or five different sections throughout the spring and summer. I've been asked many times how this could possibly be 2,000 kilometers or anything close to that because it's only one province. Actually, it turned out to be 2,118 kilometers. Zhejiang is a big place, okay? And I took a lot of windy country roads. This was my first time doing such a long bike tour and I thought that it might satisfy my obsession with biking, but actually I just want to go out and do it again even longer and even farther next time. So stay tuned for whenever I can make that happen. But for now, I'll be transitioning to a new type of content, sharing my life in rural China with you guys. That's right, I finally moved into this cute little pink house that I toured last winter. I'm actually back in the US for a couple of weeks right now, so there will probably be one vlog about that. And then I will see you guys in the beautiful bamboo mountains of rural Zhejiang.